friends and welcome to this week's video where we'll be having some fun trying out some steep style competition bouldering. A few weeks ago I went back to Skywood to try out some of their really fun competition climbs. They were left there from a mini comp that they had previously and I decided I really wanted to challenge myself in the steep section. As a slab lover myself, I really dislike steep sector. If you watch my video on how to hold slopers, you'll know that trying out different styles of bouldering can really help you build your skill and your expertise in climbing and that's exactly what I wanted to do with these competition style boulders. Comp style boulders are always fun and unique. They also make you take big risks and are often quite visually pleasing. And they're also just something really, really different. There will be really, really big features or unique style of holds. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we get into it, I just wanted to quickly explain the grade levels. So as displayed in this diagram, the climbs are graded by tape color, similar to the grading styles in Japanese bouldering gyms. The problems that I'll be attempting in this video lie within the orange to blue tape range, which is approximately V4 to V6, if I were to take a guess. Anyways, let's get into the bouldering. So climb one is the orange tape. In competition style, the tape markings dictate where to put your hands and feet at the start. In this particular climb, there are two on this black sphere hold, which by the way is Jill Tex. There's also one jib for your foot. I tried this climb multiple times before I got it as it is deceptively long and tiring. To start off, I got a high left heel hook to prep myself to reach the next Jill Tex hold on the top left. The heel hook let me save energy and pulled my hips into the next hold perfectly. Then I went right hand to the edge of the semicircle feature, which was an okay hold. The next part was a bit challenging as I had to pull off both hands and shift my body weight from left to right to land on the black feature. The degree of the walls and the slopiness of the hand hold sort of made it a bit scary to do this move. Then I did a body weight shift push over to the next crimpy hold on the feature to the right. Then I did one of my favorite moves and crossed over to match the crimp next door. Next, I put my foot on the small jib on the semicircle and pushed into the wall until I hit the knee bar. Now this is my favorite part because I love knee bars, but this was a different style of knee bar. I'm not really used to knee barring off a tiny foothold, so it was a bit risky. This next part was definitely the crux for me. I had to really push my knee bar into the wall and bring my whole body as close as possible to the next hold because I wasn't able to reach it immediately. The first time I tried this move, I was way too scared to commit because I wasn't used to pushing off that small jib where I couldn't leverage off the knee bar anymore. I don't know if you can tell, but at this move, I had to let go of the knee bar and trust that my foot wouldn't fall off as I reached for the next hold. It was a really weird feeling because the features jut out. So by the time that you're there, you're not really close to the wall anymore. The last moves were okay. They involved going from one big side crimp to a smaller but still nice-ish crimp. As I dislike using my upper body strength, I really wanted to do some sort of heel or toe hook to secure that hold at the end for a match, but struggled to find anything good. So in the end, I had to swap feet and use my upper body to hold on. But that was it. Finished the first climb and that was quite fun. Now moving on to climb number two, which is a blue tape. So the start of this problem was a bit harder to get on, as you can see. In fact, I'm not too sure in competition terms whether this was even okay, but I'm not doing competition, so it was okay. <laughs> So this one required another funky knee bar start to this golf ball textured semicircle hold and a pink slopey hold for the feet, which was fine. I had the most trouble getting my left foot up so high to start off with. I kind of had to smear my right foot and then struggle up the feature until my sideways knee bar felt okay. Then I had to back flag to secure the match. 
it's a funny shape that you end up with. It kind of reminds me of a fortune cookie because everything's so cramped and you're holding this sideways knee bar. Next, I reached left to the small, slightly crimpy hold and swapped feet to hold the bottom of the next semi golf ball as sort of an under cling. As you can imagine, it's pretty flat, so it just felt really unnatural. Then I sort of inched up the wall until it felt okay. This part was pretty pumpy, which added to the difficulty of the climb. Still, a really strange feeling as my hands were in an undercling position and I was pulling with my arms and pushing with my feet to stay on. Then I did a left heel hook to stabilize as I reached for the next left hold onto the feature. I had to push my hips slightly to the right hand side to prepare for that left hand catch. Then I moved both feet onto the top of the golf ball and toe hooked my right foot to go for the next move. The reason I did this was because I knew I'd fall off if I tried to jump for it, so I tried to put myself in the best position that required the least amount of upper arm strength. Of course, trusting a toe hook is also an issue, but ever since I got my scarpers, I openly welcome toe and heel hooking everything in sight. The next part is a right hand underclean again, but it was fine and the last move could have been a jump to the jug, but I knew that I am again terrible at catching anything high up and at that angle so I just had to shuffle around so I could tippy toe to the end. I cut anyway but I made sure to get straight back on by sticking both my feet so I could comfortably match the end. And that was climb number two. So the final climb was also a blue tape climb. This climb was tricky and techy, with three limbs on the left feature and one limb on the right to start. Luckily, being a shorter and relatively flexible person, I was able to fit right into that nook. Even after getting there though, the climb is pretty unforgiving. You have to lean backward to hold onto this sloper, so there was a bit of trouble to keep a strong core and stay on. As you can see, my knees are fully turned inward and to get to the next hold, you kind of need to go in a backwards direction. The problem was mostly the backward and upward angle that you have to go to, along with the fact that you kind of needed to reach a right hand crimp. I thought that I might need to jump to that crimp as well. I was struggling to hit that right crimp for many attempts and after a few more tries, it seemed apparent that I couldn't jump for it as my fingers were not strong enough to catch that level of swing from both that angle and amount. I knew that I had to go mostly statically if I wanted to get to it and hold on. Luckily, Skywood regular and ace climber Millie helped me and suggested a very specific beta that involved crossing over the feet so you end up facing away from the wall to the first hold so you're not struggling at the sloper. This was very helpful and immediately felt way easier to reach the right crimp since my legs were in a drop knee position that only needed to be switched to the other side instead of both knees facing inward. Instead of jumping, I just had to step off my right foot to the undercling on that sloper when going for the right crimp and I didn't have to jump to it, so I'd finally broken past this initial barrier. Next steps were to go right again and jump to the next right hand crimp. I really didn't enjoy this knowing that firstly I'm terrible at campusing, but I did shuffle my toes up to the top of the feature to try to jump to it and I managed to catch it. Unfortunately though, I only caught it with three fingers and my middle finger was also injured at that time. So it was really not good news. I did try to readjust and support my fingers with some higher feet, but that didn't feel too good either and I was pretty exhausted. And that was it. Although I didn't make it to the top, I'd want to say that I'm pretty proud of my progress. I'm definitely more open to steeper style climbing and this was definitely a very techy and unique style of comp boulder that I enjoyed trying out. There's still a very long way to go, but it was super fun. I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down, yeah. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why? I'm down, yeah. No friends of mine, no friends of mine around, yeah. Now I'm thinking now, now I'm thinking now. Why the cottage room blows, yeah. I wanna drown myself inside the juice, yeah. You know I keep on running from the truth. Is that not? I'm just a 
it for all the comp climbs that I did. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments which boulder was your favorite and whether you would have approached it in a different style to me. It's always really fun to see what everyone comes up with in terms of beta. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like competition style bouldering. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Bye!